Right, look, look, I have three or four files. I know there's some motions to record. Which is the trial today? The trial is out of the charge. Um, Doctor. From the May fourth. Two thousand thirteen. Correct. And there are two motions to impose. One is the docket number twelve CR. Um, actually, I think I may have filed the combined motion. Docket number two four five three two five zero six and fourteen point eight. Um, one concerns the replacement arrest charge, um, where there was sixty days suspended, and then another concerns. Is your last name E Owen or E A? E A. March 
14th is to be, it says that uh, pretrial discovery is to be completed within 30 days of March 14th. So uh, states objecting, saying that they didn't get the discovery that you're trying to offer here today until uh, three months after that, well, actually two months after the deadline. Would you accept it? I'm not aware of having received a correspondence uh, from the state at the time. So that correspondence is a court order. Okay, I don't receive, I don't believe I received a copy from the court either. Well, you're representing Mr. Colson. I allowed you to do that, but it's your responsibility to acquaint yourself with the file as any other representative would. And uh, there's, there's no compliance here. Okay, well, my apologies for uh, oh, you may have to apologize to Mr. Colson. It's not, you don't have to apologize to the court. It's just that that, that was an order that wasn't complied with, and I'm not going to allow uh, any any other uh, discovery. So. Well, uh, in regard well, I'll, I'll let you put on your case, but I, I suppose there might be some objections <coughs> to certain information. I don't I don't know how the case is going to go. I don't know anything more about it than what's in the complaint. So. Uh, we may have to deal with these things as piecemeal as we go along, but, but as far as as far as any any failure to comply with the, the pre-trial order, that's that's your responsibility. Okay, and also on that note, I was just wondering if I would be able to use a map of Keene uh, to print it off the internet. Uh, prosecutor would like to review it. If it's going if it's something that would assist the court and the parties in understanding what what you point out, I mean, I, I don't. Is this alleged to have occurred? Downtown. All right. Well, of course, we're fairly familiar with the downtown area. If, it, if, it, if any points of contention come up, and the map might help to clarify that, we can we can deal with that at the time. Okay. Anything else? I would say for you. Okay. Stay calm, Alan. Give it. Square and started 
continued to call me cop caller. And why and what were you doing? Were you in fact calling the police? I, I was, yes. And why were you calling the police? Because I, I was aware of the no trespass order in the square. Concerning Mr. Colson? Yes. And do you know his full name? Uh, I believe it's Grant, Grant Colson. Do you recognize Grant Colson in the court here today? Yes. And where is he seated for the record? You can describe what he's wearing, perhaps? Um, black glasses, black shirt. Will the record reflect the witness that I've him? No. Thank you. And um, who, is it your understanding that um, the King Police Department did pursue an arrest warrant for Mr. Colson for criminal trespass? Yes, it is. Based on that particular incident you just described? Yes. And is it your understanding that he was arrested? Yes. And there were bail conditions? Yes. And was one of those conditions, um, did a condition concern you particularly? Uh, one of the conditions was uh, no contact order uh, with, with me. Okay. And drawing your attention to May 4th of this, or last year, excuse me, 2013, at about 10.40 in the morning, were you also on duty as a parking enforcement officer? I was. I was on Main Street at the time. And where about in particular specifically were you? I was um, heading um, towards the square on Main Street. I was right in front of a local burger. And what were you doing? I, I was reading the meters. And um, what if anything happened that you were wrong? Um, I started heading towards the square and I noticed Mr. Colson coming and I was aware of the no contact door so I tried to do the best I could. And, just avoid eye contact with them. And I looked left towards the meters, <coughs> the parked cars. And um, as we walked by, I heard Mr. Colson say, cop caller, and then he kept walking. Okay. And do you remember about how close the proximity he was to you at the time he passed you? Um, like I said, I looked left, so it's hard to tell. I believe he was in arm reach, but I can't be certain. described that the no trespass order was allegedly violated by the defendant um, that was in April of last year. Uh, how well have you been acquainted with the defendant? Um, I've known Mr. Colson up to that point. I guess you could say personally and professionally from him following me doing uh, the activity called Robin Hood for roughly a, a year or so. How would you describe your relationship with Mr. Paulson? Uh, honestly, rocky at best. Some days were better than others. Some days were, we get very personal with me. Uh, rocky, you said? Yes, sir. Um, <clears throat> what exactly would Mr. Paulson do that would bother you? And why is this relevant to what the determination I have to make here today? Uh, the mindset of the defendant in this case uh, and his, his relationship to, I mean, the mindset of the witness in this case and his relationship to the defendant um, is uh, an element of the matter which may have motivated the actions of the parties involved. So it's a question If it tends to show bias or prejudice on the part of the witness, I'll let you ask the question, but, but at least some, I might have to impose some limits on how far you go with that. And so you can ask the question again. Um, so you said that the, the defendant would make it personal. I believe you said, you know, if you describe that, what that meant. Um, he would make comments based on my religious or my military status. He made a comment calling me a racist and I condone the droning of brown babies. Um, he would make comments about my wife. Um, I don't know how much you, you would like to know. Over the, the course of your relationship with Mr. Colson, did you ever understand him to be a physical threat? He would get very close and that. Why is this, again, why is this relevant, whether he was a physical threat or not? Um, the imposition of no contact orders with witnesses uh, is, is usually based on the uh, 
uh, position of the court that there may be some sort of uh, you know, threat to the individual parties involved. So since there's no contact order involved in this case, understanding whether or not um, one thought that somebody was a physical threat or any other sort of issue um, is relevant to the case. Well, bail conditions are imposed for a variety of reasons. Physical threat is one, but that's, it's not relevant to this case. So I'm going to sustain the objection.
your response to that? Um, well, I would say that it does not call for hearsay because the, the witness has identified as having had some relationship with the defendant. So I'm asking about his personal experience with the defendant, not his experience with others regarding the defendant. I would say anything you've heard on YouTube is certainly hearsay. Any statement that you heard, I don't think it would fall under any exception. Well, you can say what you saw on YouTube, but it's not for the truth of that matter. In other words, if they saw something, that's one thing. That doesn't prove that Mr. Colson has any problem with his eyesight. That would have to come from some competent witness or another. Over the course of your interactions with Mr. Colson, have you ever observed him looking at meters? Yes. Did he ever appear as someone? I don't know. I picked him up. Switch? I'm not sure. I tend to not examine what he's doing very closely. I tend to worry about my job. Thank you. Over the course of your relationship with Mr. Colson in regards to the robber hooding activity, have you made many public statements about Mr. Colson? To who? Any statements that would be... I would object to this. I think now we're starting to get into some of the discovery that he just barely submitted a couple of weeks ago. Well, it's hard for me to make a judgment without knowing what that discovery purports to be. I think Mr. Ian can confirm that. Okay. Thank you. I'm asking about whether or not the witness made public statements related to this matter. This particular matter that I'm trying here today or to other related matters? Well, I believe you asked some questions to see if they were related to this particular matter. That's not what your question was. Your question was if you make statements about Mr. Colson. Yes. And I guess my question is, do you make statements about Mr. Colson relative to this particular case or to other issues? Well, that's what I'd like to ask if it is related to this case. Well, you can ask him if he made any statements about Mr. Colson with respect to this particular case. I'll let you ask him that question and I'll ask him to answer that. Okay. So have you made any public statements relative to Mr. Colson? The only statements that were made... No. The question on this particular contempt charge is trying to be tried for this matter. That's the question that you can ask. The one you just asked was rather open-ended. That's not what... I'm not going to comment on that. Have you made any statements relative to the no-contact order between yourself and Greg Colson and facts related to that situation? Again, for this particular case, the contempt case from May 4th, you can ask him if he made any statements about Mr. Colson relative to that particular incident. You're kind of dancing around the question here. That's going to be a very specific question. Otherwise, I don't think it's relevant to this case. Was the last question objected to? Well, it was objected to. I'm sort of giving you an opportunity to ask the question, but only as to this case. It's not a general question I'm allowing you to ask. Okay. So, Mr. Gibbons, did you make any public statements relative to this case? I'm so confused right now. This case is based on a complaint that alleges that Mr. Colson violated bail conditions on May 4th, the incident that you testified to on direct. And Mr. Ian is trying to ask you whether you made any public statements about Mr. Colson with respect to... If you made a million statements about Mr. Colson, that's one thing, but did you make any statements about Mr. Colson with respect to this incident? That's the question I'll have you answer if you can answer it. Okay. The only statements I would make regarding this case was the fact that all I said was, to my knowledge, there was a no trespass order and also that there was, I guess, a violation of the bail conditions when he had contact with me. Did you make any statements regarding Mr. Colson any time after he was arrested for violating the contact order? Again, the question... It sounds like you've asked the question a second time. The only one I'll let you ask is, did you make any statements, public statements, about this case? 
happens. Obviously, didn't make any before this happened. If you made anything coincidental with it happening or subsequent about this case, that's fine. I realize that there may be other issues where the witnesses made public statements. I haven't seen any, but that's the only one I'm interested in hearing, hearing from. So, uh, from what my understanding is that I'm prohibited from asking questions that may demonstrate that the witness may have advised or animus uh, against Mr. Colson, even if those statements were made following. The I'm only talking right. I'm only talking about this particular case here. He made statements with respect to how he felt about this particular case. Okay. Well, I believe that's uh, excluding some of the evidence, but. Um, Mr. Gibbs, did you uh, make any statements regarding um, scratch that? Um, there have been previous court hearings related to your relationship with Mr. Paulson, correct? Well, I'll let, let him answer that question and see where it goes. Yes. And you made statements uh, regarding your relationship with Mr. Colson over the course of some of those hearings in the Cheshire Superior Court, right? We did make courts in the state in the uh, Superior Court, yes. And you did admit to threatening the safety of Graham Colson at one point in time in court, correct? Right? Yeah, I don't see how this is relevant to what the court has to Has there ever been an incident in which you threatened the safety of Grant Colson? Objection. What's, what's the relevance? Um, it's uh, to demonstrate that Mr. Colson, despite having uh, orders applied to him that he was forced to follow, that he never demonstrated any um, any malintent towards uh, any criminal malintent towards Mr. Gibbets. However, there is a question as to whether or not there had been um, some negative intention on the part of Mr. Gibbs towards Mr. Colson in the past. Well, that's not relevant. The second part is irrelevant. It may become relevant if, if, if in fact, the court found Mr. Find Mr. Colson guilty. You might be able to argue in litigation as far as sentencing is concerned, but as far as this case is concerned, it's, it's not relevant. understand the bail conditions on Mr. Colson uh, with respect to the no contact order to be 